Hello, and thank you for stopping by HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of dividing rational expressions. But before we get into dividing rational expressions, let's talk about dividing rational numbers, um, because we're going to need this skill to be able to divide two rational expressions. So we're going to divide 5 twelfths by 1 15th. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the division as multiplication. There's a property in arithmetic that says we can take any division of rational numbers and rewrite it as multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. Um, so the 5 twelfths, that's called the dividend, is going to stay the same. And then we change this to multiplication, and the reciprocal of 1 15th is 15 over 1. Next, we're going to simplify common factors of any numerator with any denominator. So 5 has nothing in common with 12 or 1 besides 1. 15, however, it has a common factor with 12. They're both divisible by 3. So 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 3 goes into 12 4 times. Now, it might be tempting to say, look, there's two 5s, how cool, but they're both numerators, so we don't simplify out two numerators, because that's not going to balance out. Okay, now we're going to multiply the remaining factors of the numerator together. 5 times 5 is 25. Multiply the remaining factors of the denominator together. 4 times 1 is 4. And we're done. We might want to double check. Do 25 and 4 have any common factors? The answer is, well, yes, they do. They have a common factor of 1, but we don't really care. They have no other common factors. Next, you need to talk to your instructor to see if you can leave your answer as an improper fraction, such as 25 fourths. Or if you need to convert it to a mixed number, that's fine too. That would be 4 goes into 25 four, uh, 6 whole times with 1 fourth left over. This is basically what we want to do when we're dividing two rational expressions. So for rational expressions, same first step. Rewrite the division as multiplication. The second step, though, changes. We want to factor each numerator and factor each denominator because when we're dealing with rational expressions, the factors aren't as obvious as they are when we're dealing with numbers. Then we're going to simplify out common factors of any numerator and any denominator, and of course we're going to ignore one. Lastly, we multiply the remaining factors of the numerator together and the remaining factors of the denominator together. When we do this, you want to check with your instructor to see if you can leave answers in factored form or if you need to distribute and have a polynomial numerator and a polynomial denominator. Let's look at some examples. Our first example, we have a monomial. Uh, each piece is a monomial. Sorry, these are not monomials. And the first step, rewrite is multiplication. So when we rewrite as multiplication, the first fraction stays the same. Negative 15a to the fourth b squared over 26 a, b to the fifth. Then we change this to multiplication, and now we multiply by the reciprocal. That would be 39a squared b over 10 times a times b. From here, likewise, if you watch the multiplication video, I'm not going to multiply the uh, integer factors together. I'm going to leave those separate, but I will combine the numerators just so that I only have one factor of a in the numerator and one factor of b in the numerator slash also denominator. So I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 15 times 39. Now I have four factors of a and two more. That would be a to the sixth. I have two factors of b and one more would make that b cubed. In the denominator, I'm going to leave the 26 and the 10 separated. I have a and a, that's a squared. b to the fifth and b would be b to the sixth. I don't have to do this step. I could just simplify, but just to make my life easier, this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and see what I can find. So 15 and 10 have a common factor of 5. That would be 3 there and 2 there. 39 and 26 have a common factor of 13. That would be 3 there and 2 there. And we're done simplifying the integers. Uh, for the a's, I have 6 factors of a in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. That's going to leave me with 4 factors of a in the numerator. I have 3 factors of b in the numerator and 6 in the denominator. That's going to leave me with three factors of b in the denominator. And now I'm ready. I'm going to multiply straight across. Negative three times three is nine times a to the fourth is negative nine a to the fourth. In the denominator, two times two times b cubed would be four b cubed. Now I notice that I only have one factor of a and one factor of b. That's good. That means we, we simplified. If you have a factor of a in the numerator and one in the denominator, you're not done simplifying. Nine and four have no common factors besides one. You can leave the, the negative in the numerator, or if you want to put it out in front of the fraction, that's fine too. But this would be our final answer for the first example. Our next example, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite as multiplication. I'm not going to worry about anything else. 
leave this first rational expression alone, leave it just as you see it. Now this one we're going to take the reciprocal, that would be 2a plus 6b divided by a, b plus b squared. Now we're going to factor each numerator and factor each denominator. a squared minus b squared right here, that's a difference of squares, that's going to factor into a minus b times a plus b. The denominator, that there is only one factor, um, this would be like a prime factor type thing. Up here we have a common factor of 2, that would give me a plus 3b. And lastly we have a common factor of b, giving me a plus b. Now we have everything's factored, so we're going to look for common factors. I see an a plus b here and here, so those are going to cancel. And a factor of a plus 3b in the numerator and denominator, so we can divide those out, leaving us with 2 times a minus b over b. And that would be our final answer. Alternatively, we could distribute the 2 if that's what your professor or instructor requests. If they don't, I would just leave it like this and call it a day. Here is our next example, and the first thing we're going to do is rewrite it as multiplication. This would give me t squared plus t plus 1 divided by t cubed minus 1 times 1 minus t squared over t squared minus 4t plus 3. Okay, and now we're ready to factor. t squared plus t plus 1 is actually not factorable, so it's a prime factor, so to speak. So we're going to leave it as is. I'll put it in parentheses just in case it simplifies. t cubed minus 1, that's a difference of cubes that would factor into root minus root times root squared plus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. Now up here in the numerator, 1 minus t squared, we might want to consider that this is the equivalent of negative t squared plus 1, which is the equivalent of negative t squared minus 1. That way it looks like all of the other corners, and we have that variable first, and we have that variable positive. So we're just going to factor out that negative 1. t squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so it's going to be negative t minus 1 times t plus 1. And then in the denominator, t squared minus 4t plus 3, that's a nice trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, so we can use the shortcut, t minus 3 times t minus 1. Now we're going to look for some common factors. That one did end up canceling with that denominator there. The t minus 1 will cancel, and that's it. Um, so that's going to leave us with, in the numerator we have negative t plus 1. That t plus 1 needs to stay in parentheses because of that negative sign. And then in the denominator, we have t minus 3 times t minus 1. Uh, if you want to get rid of the parentheses in the numerator, you would need to distribute the negative sign, or you could put the negative out in front, and then you could just write the t plus 1. If you're going to leave it like this, just include those parentheses, and we're good to go. And this would be our final answer for this example. Our next example, oof, we've got a lot of work to do, but we're not going to talk about that yet, because the first thing we're going to do is write this as multiplication. This would be 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 divided by 4x squared plus 8x plus 3 times 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 16. It looks like we have one nice corner, the x squared minus 16. Everything else, the factoring might take a little bit of work. So starting with the top left, the top left we have 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. The target product is negative 24 and the target sum is negative 5. That means we're going to rewrite this. Our winning combination will be negative 8 and positive 3. So I'm going to rewrite minus 5x as minus 8x plus 3x. 2x squared minus 8x plus 3x minus 12. Now we can factor by grouping. Here we're going to factor out a 2x, leaving us with x minus 4. Uh, the second grouping we can factor out a 3 leaving us with x minus 4, and finally we end up with x minus 4, the GCF, times the leftovers from each term. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this up here, x minus 4 times 2x plus 3. In the denominator here, so this is going to be bottom left, we have 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. Here the target product is 12, and the target sum is 8. Two numbers that multiply to 12 and add up to 8 would be 6 and 2. So I'm going to replace 
8x with 6x and 2x, or you could do 2x and 6x, it doesn't matter. So 4x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 3. Now we have four terms. We can group the first two terms and pull out the GCF of 2x. Dividing that into each term will leave me with 2x plus 3. The GCF of 2x and 3 is 1. This is that rare time where I actually write the 1 just so I can see that it physically exists. Now the two terms do have a GCF of 2x plus 3 and that's being multiplied to the leftovers 2x plus 1. So at the bottom left we're going to say 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. All right, hey, one more that's going to be a little bit challenging and then that bottom is sparing us because it's a difference of squares. We have the top right. The top right we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. For this one, our target product is 6 and our target sum is 7. Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add up to 7 would be 6 and 1. So I'm replacing 7x with 6x and 1x. 2x squared plus 6x plus 1x, which I'm just going to say x, plus 3. And we're going to factor by grouping. That's going to be 2x times x plus 3 plus 1. We'll factor out that GCF of 1 times x plus 3. Now we, these two terms have a GCF of x plus 3, and the leftovers are 2x and 1. So our top right is now x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. And the bottom right uh, is a difference of squares. That's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. All right, all the heavy lifting is done. Whew, now it's the fun part. We get to cross out the common factors. There's an x minus 4. There's 2x plus 3s. Here's a pair of 2x plus 1s, leaving us with our final answer of x plus 3 divided by x plus 4. In our last example, let me just double check, yep, last example here, um, I noticed it, I'm not going to notice anything because I'm going to rewrite as multiplication first. So it's going to be 8 plus p cubed over 16 minus p to the fourth times p squared plus 4 over p squared minus 2p plus 4. Okay, now what I notice is that the left fraction, we they both start with the constant and then they have the uh, variable term second. So I'm just going to rewrite both of those. This is nice because it's addition and it's commutative so we can switch places. But 16 minus p to the fourth, uh, we're going to, if we flip it, it'll be negative p to the fourth plus 16. We don't want that p to the fourth to be negative. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 leaving me with p to the fourth minus 16. Now, the top right, top, excuse me, top left, p cubed plus 8, that can be factored because that's a um, sum of cubes. That's going to factor into p plus 2, root plus root, times root squared minus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. The bottom left, I'm going to go over here and just do, because this is going to be a little bit of work. So bottom left, we have negative p to the fourth minus 16. p to the fourth minus 16, that's a difference of squares. That's p squared minus 4 times p squared plus 4. And then p squared minus 4 is also a difference of squares, so it can be further factored into p minus 2 times p plus 2. p squared plus 4 cannot be factored, so it would just stay like that. So here we end up with negative p minus 2 times p plus 2 times p squared plus 4. The top right, this p squared plus 4, that cannot be factored, so it's just itself a factor. And the bottom, p squared minus 2p plus 4, that cannot be factored, so that itself is just one single factor. All right, and now let's cancel out our common factors, p plus 2 by p squared plus 4 by p squared minus 2p, adios leaving us with that negative, so you can leave it in the denominator, you can pull it out in front, I might just pull it out in front. The numerator, we're left with just a factor of 1, and then we have p minus 2. If you were to leave the negative in the denominator, that p minus 2 would must stay in parentheses. So if you were going to leave it down there, it would need to read this, or you could distribute it, which would be negative p plus 2. But we want to be really careful about what we do with that negative, because it's really easy to just say, well, I don't need the parentheses anymore, but you do. So you can either leave your answer like this, or like this, or you can distribute, it doesn't matter.